What's up Dapper Squad, it's your boy Darius back at it again with another Patreon request. Huge shout out to Josh for the support and for the request this time. Um, we have more of a video essay style of video that he requested. This one was called The Power of Sakuga by Mother's Basement. I've seen a few Mother's Basement videos before. Um, I know they're a great channel when it comes to topics like these and other anime based situations and they're very eloquent, and very well spoken. So again, thank you to Josh. Remember, if you guys want to request something as well, you guys can check out that Patreon. All the links are down below. Like always, I say we hop right on into this. I don't know what Sakuga really is, so I am very curious. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Sakuga. If you've spent any time among hardcore anime fans, you've likely heard the term at least once and may be wondering what it means. Is it a Pokemon? One of I, Boruto's I have no pieces? idea. A particularly impressive brand of cherry blossom. Technically, yes, it can be all of those things. Really? Because, as you'll have likely picked up contextually if you've heard me use it in videos, Sakuga is a category of animation that is a defining feature of anime. Specifically, okay. it's the part of the anime what looks real pretty. And that's about as specific as I can get, because in okay. like anime itself, Sakuga is a term we borrowed from Japanese, literally translating to working drawing, that is tricky to precisely define. I won't lie. It when you seize it, but it's not a I hope I'm not spoiled on anything in the background in terms of just the animation like that. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to watch that. Complexity. But Sakuga can look and feel like just about anything. It okay. is, by its nature, the most creatively free... The animation so far is amazing. ...anime in which it appears. So perhaps the easiest way to understand what Sakuga is... Okay. ...is to understand what it's not. Okay. Anime is fundamentally low-budget media, even by television standards. Really? American high-concept prestige TV, like Game of Thrones or Stranger Things, can cost six to ten million dollars an episode. I've heard that. Lower end stuff like The Walking, Walking Dead, Dead uh -huh. and Supernatural tends to run in the two to three million dollar range. Okay, Japanese that's still super expensive for episode. So forward with their finances, but it's reasonable to assume that Tokusatsu series like Common Rider and Super Sentai hit seven digits per episode as well. TV anime, by comparison, brings fantastical concepts to life for two to three million dollars per season, meaning each really? episode of anime will run its creators a couple hundred grand at most. Mm, and those rates are interesting. pretty well consistent throughout the industry. Even shows you might think of as high budget yeah. like One Punch Man fall comfortably in that range. It's other factors like artist talent and passion that make the difference. Okay. Premium feeling. I love learning more on the back end stuff of anime. You know, a lot of it things I don't know. If you think about it, recognizable voices demand lower salaries than famous faces. CGI effects yeah. can be a lot lower on detail when they're appearing next to 2D artwork. And True. animated set pieces and stunts only cost as much as the drawings that comprise them. Those Fair should points. cost more. Animators in Japan are grossly underpaid. I agree. Far less than minimum wage for far more than a 40-hour work week. But even if they all made three times as much per episode for the exact same work they do now, those episodes would still be relatively economical. That's because anime is produced astonishingly quickly, so no production has to pay most of its staff for very long. Okay. It's not uncommon for whole anime episodes to be turned around in a two-month period or less, pushed along an assembly line from writers to animators to the sound team, so that everyone's always working. I don't mean to pause it, but I am curious, because I have seen videos before of, like, day in the life of a Japanese... Was it a casino? Like a casino worker or something like that. I would love to see a day in the life of either an animator at an animation studio or a mangaka specifically. Because I feel like they have different, very different lifestyles. But I'm, I need to know more about the back end of anime, something. you know? And with long-running weekly anime based on big properties Ooh. like One Piece and Pokemon, the turnaround watch that. time can be a handful of weeks or less. That's what crazy. What possible is tightly regimented scheduling built on an understanding that there's only so much animation that can be done in the time allotted. Okay. Many anime even have their per episode frame counts fixed along with their budgets before any pre-production work is done, which of course has to be accounted for in the schedule as well. 
that means if you want to add some extra zhuzh to a big fight scene or amp up the emotion of your characters in a key dramatic moment, you might have to reduce some less vital dialogue here or a side character really? to a series of easy to draw really? near static images with lots of dynamic camera panning. To okay. The lack of okay. Flat that was one of a lot of people's complaints about my hero season four. Out in a few hours while still looking half decent. True. A lot of the cinematic flourishes and stylus. This is one of the best parts of season three. Anime are a direct product of this approach to efficiency. Interesting. Conversely, much of what we associate with cartoons is a product of the different limited animation process devised by American animation studios like Hanna Barbera during the syndicated cartoon boom of the 50s and 60s. But that's a topic for another video. If you want I might want to I might want to see that video too honestly dynamism throughout a whole show you're going to want to design your characters to be quick to draw and redraw that's why early dynamism. actually I don't know what that was I don't mean to rewind it but I don't know what this is I saw a clip of this like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles anime I don't know what's going on but this shit looks insane the animation the the flow oh my god I actually might want to check that out your characters to be quick to draw and it was it actually kind of blew me away and current trigger shows are so stylized and cartoony why mob psycho and FMA translate so well to animation and why Pokemon's anime undertook such a dramatic visual show yeah for I, I can see and that shows are in my opinion more fun to watch or at least look at than your average anime but even they need to compromise on a lot of cuts to ensure that their biggest moments have the necessary oomph. Okay. Those stylistically compromised cuts are what we call limited animation, while Sakuga refers to the sequences between them, where animators are given time to indulge themselves and us by letting their imaginations run wild. When the energy of One for All courses through Deku's veins and the camera spins wildly around him, that's a Sakuga. When okay. Bob throws half a city at Toichiro in midair, that's a Sakuga. And when a waifu or husbando starts crying and you can see the individual tears yeah. in their Yeah, I'm so glad they're doing shows I've already seen chin, for this, you know. Oh, I don't know, you know, I'm trying to uh, speak of the devil, you know. Moments and these sequences can elevate an already sad story to new 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. Oh my god, I'm so glad I saw that too. That was such a oh. Wait, I haven't seen that one. Time character acting sakuga externalizes the <laughs> maybe inner have i don't know anime heroes and heroines in their most vulnerable passionate moments action sakuga makes the improbable and impossible stuff that we come to anime for in the first place feel real and strong environmental or effects animation can make a wild fantastical wow and the magic i love how they showed that like the, the different muscle. layers of and the added effects on top each one is its own individual is science like i don't have a good segue for this but let me tell you about today's sponsor oh, okay i like that i like that i have to skip this sadly but i appreciate your sponsorship when a show's setting is entirely mundane sakuga tends to feel pretty darn magical of course you feel that the strongest in the moment it hits but the thing is that feeling can linger even when the animation puts its limiters back on 100 percent properly sakuga leaves an impression is this monogatari because it's a great example look and feel of what its world and characters are really like when you zoom in and examine them at the highest possible level of fidelity. Yeah. And that impression carries over to and colors how your brain interprets the less impressive parts of the show. True. Kind of like how the extremely detailed interior locations of Insomniac's Marvel Spider-Man help to make its whole sandbox yeah. city feel more alive and living. Firmly agree. That's a valid example. Sakuga, you begin to associate strong vocal inflections with the dramatic animations that sometimes accompany them, so that even when the characters are just flapping their lips, your mind projects the those more expressive expressions onto them. When the camera pans fast and zooms in tight in a fight, obscuring the action, your brain fills in the blanks of what's happening off screen based on what you've previously seen these heroes and villains do. True. Just one shot of a camera moving through an environment. I'm not trying to watch any Cowboy Bebop amazingness, you know. Ah, oh, damn it, more Cowboy Bebop amazingness. Or to give a more specific and relevant example, you only really need to see the excruciating. I can't watch ReZero season two amazingness either. ReZero is capable of once to make its every subsequent appearance. I understand that though. I, I like this concept that they're talking about. With well-crafted limited cuts that effectively disguise their simple animation. I just can't watch this part. Sakuga can make a 
relatively inexpensive show feel like a truly premium product from start to finish. I agree. Foldable has built its entire Ooh. brand on this principle. Unlimited Small budget works. Shows that feel like they belong on the big screen by dropping explosively impressive bits of animation at satisfying moments and airbrushing over the gaps between them with yep. simple but effective CG lighting and other post-processing effects that liven up the more limited scenes. Oh my it god. It is perhaps a little easier to see what tricks they're pulling after you've seen another studio try and fail to achieve the same effect. Like and what? that's about the only reason I can think of that anyone should watch Handshakers ever. Now, that, that animation sort of looks kind of crazy, I won't lie. It can only really be pulled off consistently in a seasonal show that has the uh -huh. production lead time to plan it all out in advance. But long-running weekly anime had their own way of leveraging Oh, the can't watch that! Beyond what they're able to pull together in the time that! they have to make episodes. Can oh, they want that! Transformations, special attack sequences, and other inherently awesome repeatable story beats that justify their lavish production values through their ability to be inserted into multiple episodes, or even every episode of an anime, to pad out its runtime. My god, I miss Digimon, man. After a while, but the great ones never really do. They never do. Oh my god, I could see that 145 times. I've never seen Sailor Moon, the show, but every time, I would never get tired of that. He's not wrong. If it's done right, of Domon Kashu's glows with an awesome okay. power. I like, I like this example. Grip tells him to defeat you. And when Terriermon digivolves and his face contorts in agony as his pelt is ripped from his swelling, doesn't he turn into like Angemon? With Gargamon skin, Gargamon. Shit, Tamers is dark. It instantly makes the adjacent fight feel more tangible and exciting, even Damn. if none of the other animation touches. See, I miss my boy Metal Garurumon. Honestly, I, I miss Digimon, man. Owed most of his anime addiction to those few really powerful moments of animation, and uh, if you really think about it, anime openings are basically the ultimate example of canned Sakuga in action. So the valid I point. No, if all that much has changed. The valid point. Decades. Oh my god, well, these openings are amazing. One big thing. I have a much deeper appreciation for the skill and artistry that goes into making these sequences and the shows around them now. There's one other vital aspect of Sakuga that makes it more than just good animation: the personal element. Obviously. All good animation is the problem. I love how he's putting the actual the animator's name um, above these amazing action. moments because all these are insane moments. A great deal of finesse and skill at oh, God of War motion capture. I've watched the entire but Making Kratos really documentary. I love it. The animator at the forefront of the scene. The way they draw lines, how they handle smear frames, yeah. the unique sense of motion, time, I do like that. It does feel different. It feels personal. Timing. All of these distinct artistic sensibilities define the look and feel True. of Sakuga cut. True. The goal of Sakuga, so much as it even has one, is not generally to make something that's wholly cohesive with the carefully massaged brand aesthetic of the production committee's animated commodity. There's rarely enough time to exert that much control over the artists while still letting them produce their best work. Rather, Sakuga allows them to blow the audience away with their vision and artistic ability as individual creators. God damn, Truly is that a beautiful movie? Sakuga cuts so is that, animated man. Animated autographs for the artists behind Animated the autographs. That is a great way to say it. To the discerning True. Their own True. True. Nakamura, Yoshimichi Kameda, Hiroyuki Imaishi, Masami Goto, Shingo Natsume, Yo Yoshinori, Ichiro Itano. Sakuga fans know the these artists and many many others by their names yeah and by i need to learn more and i need to start respecting them and putting respect on their name spot their signature flourishes i need to do this because there are whole communities dedicated to cataloging and correctly crediting really animated sequences be they oh shit by known all-time greats or obscure up-and-coming amateurs and while communities like Sakugaburu are fighting an uphill battle against the ever-swelling Artist Unknown tag, they fight it valiantly and score minor and major victories daily. It's not a precise science, many of the shots on the Boru's presumed tag are likely misattributed, but the fact that any shots not credited by official sources have been linked back to their creators, even dubiously, is a testament to just how much personality Sakuga artists encounter. God damn, man.
And there is something I am flabbergasted satisfying about being able to track the artistic oh, evolution of insanely the across all of the different productions. 100 percent. I love that. The entertainment industry at large largely encourages us to associate the feelings that art evokes in us with the handful of brands that own the rights to that art. Valid instead point. Instead of the armies of artists who actually went and made it. Valid. Sakuga very, very, very valid point. Very powerful way. I need to in think about realm, that more least, often. The animator is king. Yeah. Just a I love that. Cog in the anime assembly line. The fruits That's what I'm saying. I need to. The they cultivate across different productions as they produce it are what the Sakuga fans are here for. I need to stop putting even so much emphasis on the brands and the companies and more on the animators themselves because this is fucking. This is amazing. What a Sakuga is, I think you still feel that when you're Yeah. Oh, ev every everybody who's watched anime does. The passion. The That's talent, crazy. The unique way of seeing the world Damn. that produced that specific imagery and motion. The human touch behind it all reaches through the static and connects with you as a viewer. Sakuga is one of the most potently and viscerally alluring things about anime when you're first introduced to it. I'm that learning. Power only grows the more you learn about it. Let me know in the comments down below who your favorite animators are, if you have any, or if not, what moments from anime most stand out to you looking back on it. I'm sure some Sakuga fans watching this can tell you who made them happen. And while I've got you here, consider checking out my recent rundown of the best anime openings of 2020 or my list of Avatar's best fights for more Sakuga sweeps. Avatar's best fights? Ooh, that might be a good video to watch, I can't lie. One of you guys might need to request that for next month, I don't know, <laughs> something, that's a great video. Well, first off, thank you Josh for the request, much, much, very much appreciated. Um, I must say I learned an insane amount in this video, not only obviously what Sakuga is, what its intention is, but it does go a lot deeper than that. Even it's like basic intention of, like he said, blowing our minds away during certain scenes, adding a stamp, adding an animated autograph. There's like, there's, it's, it's, it's so multi-layered. It really is like. From, like he said, the personal touch each animator who's in charge of that particular project is doing it. it I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but I gathered a new level of respect for animators and the the process in which an animation is made because I didn't realize how quickly they could be pumped out, how how tight and secure the chain of command needs to be in order for these to work it needs to go to the writers then the script makers then immediately to the voice actors then the anime like it's like everything has its flow and it fits fully but still able to add that swing or that that little spice in there to make it insane like really does blow me away like the work these guys do is insane and i love and i it's kind of like a subconscious thing you don't really think about it but i loved what he said about these moments that kind of wow you or that go out of their way and blow your mind allows you to sort of fill in the rest of the show kind of with that. Not saying like the uh, the rest of the animation is on like a level that's less or of lesser quality than that part, but it's, it's very similar. Like my biggest example growing up, and I didn't even realize this at the time as a kid, Obviously, you could tell it was different, but I didn't put two and two together um, would be Naruto and Naruto. And you guys can please, please confirm or deny because this is pure speculation for me. I've heard and I can name the fights in particular. Uh, no, spo no spoilers for Naruto. You know, I don't want to spoil you. Uh, Rock Lee versus Gaara, uh, Sarutobi versus Orochimaru, um, and then Sasuke versus Naruto. All in OG Naruto is what I'm talking about it. Weren't those three fights, which in my opinion are probably the three biggest fights of OG Naruto, weren't those all done by the same animator? Because you could tell, because the animation style for the entire episode changed. I love that. Oh, it, oh, I'm thinking specifically about those fights right now, and I still get goosebumps. I literally have goosebumps right now. Like, it's just crazy what he was saying, how it can do that, and it can make you, oh, I don't know, man. 
I must say, Josh, you requested a fantastic video for me to watch. I learned a lot. I am much more interested in this field. I feel like I've been ignorant in certain aspects. Thank you for the request. Thank you for the support. If you guys, like I said, would like to request anything, make sure you check out that Patreon down below. Um, other than that, I'm going to be hopping in this next video. I appreciate y'all immensely. Don't forget to drink some water. Tell someone you love them. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Uh, peace out, y'all.